Pink Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we are going to review offensive team today. Many of you have asked me to review teams for PvP and I think I'll be starting off this mini series with three teams. Offensive, Magic and Universal. So this is the first offensive team. The first offensive team is the very typical setup that most newer and returning players should be using and that will be Dylan's called Red, Grid, Fenrir and Fi. Fi is easily obtainable from your jumping check-in, okay, but of course I would certainly suggest you uh, work on your PvE first, okay, but if you really really want Fi, then yes, she's on your day 7 jumping check-in. As for the rest, they're available in selectors already, so this is kind of the most easily accessible offensive team, and it's very good for you to climb quickly in the early stages. Okay, so just to briefly talk about how this team works for newer and returning players. Cog is the one that decreases defense of your enemies each turn. She also provides paralyzed immunity up to 12 turns. Red Grid is the one that increases your physical attack by 60%. Fenra increases lethal rate by 50%. Dylan's provides rough block. And Fire is a crazy DPS for you. Okay, Dylan's is also a DPS. Okay, but he is more of a counter unit. Fire is pretty much the status effect damager, as you can see here, from Agnes Flame. Okay, she is a very very strong unit when you build her out all the way. And many people are still using offensive teams even in the top 50 teams used. Okay? People rarely use Fenra now even though offensive teams are used but we'll look at another team later. Fenra is a little weak as you climb higher up especially if you don't have the right gear for him because he can be one shot very easily now with all the very strong equipment uh, builds that enemies potentially have. As you can see here, he still hits very very hard. Okay, so it's still good to have him, especially since his lethal rate boost actually allows your entire team to run crit weapons instead. So it's a give or take if you want to use him or not. What makes this team so good since six months ago when Red Grid was released is that it is so tightly knit. Okay, there's really you know, every single hero on this team plays a very important role towards the entire team. And I think Red Grid being released 6 months ago really sealed this team, cemented this team together because she, you know, increases physical attack by 60%, giving offensive teams a very huge potential to do good damage. Meanwhile, Fi has always been amazing, almost a year already in the meta and she is still insane. The reason why I went with this formation with Fi at the back is that I want to boost her attack power because her Agnes Flame runs on her physical attack. So the higher the physical attack, the better her Agnes Flame and you really really want her to use Agnes Flame straight away from the start. Unfortunately, you know, in this match, the Agnes Flame was cleansed and that's not the most ideal situation of course. But you know, if you manage to get the Agnes Flame landing and your other attacks continuously hit the enemy, you will see that you will be able to cripple the enemy very very quickly in the early stages of the match. Of course, we'll talk about the equipment and gear much later after this uh, entire team has finished the run. Okay. Previously, we saw that they were up against an offensive team but now we are up against a universal team and I will also show you guys what it is to go up against a magic team as well. So thankfully, you know in this formation, a good thing is that most of the 4-man attacks will hit the front line unless you are that unlucky. So that also kind of means that Fire has a higher chance to use her attacks right from the start. In case you know your frontline gets stunned, electrified or whatsoever or feared, um, then Fire gets to use her Agnes Flame. This team especially is very susceptible to fear because you don't have anti here. So with Judas still being very common around uh, in Arena, I think it's going to be a little difficult okay, for you to uh, go through that. Especially when fear lands on you, you can expect quick and little hits to land on your heroes and that is going to be you know, a very big hit to your team. Of course here we do have Able as well, we are facing Able, and that's not the best matchup because to be honest, offensive 
heroes are slightly more frail being offensive heroes okay they are pretty much like glass cannons in a way so yeah when you are facing a tanky team with a very strong dps you may face some trouble the win rate for this team i would say was about 50 50 honestly maybe it could be due to my you know hero builds or whatsoever but i didn't exactly had a very smooth time with this team which is pretty evident as well because if you check the top 100 players very seldom will people run offensive teams with Fenrir now because Fenrir is just slightly you know, weaker now Cult is good because she is actually the cleanser and you really want a cleanser to be on your team because of the buff block landed by the enemies so if you are able to cleanse your buff block away early you can actually you know get buffs <laughs> from your pet if I'm not wrong actually I'm not too sure if offensive teams really need to clear the buff block because they don't have turn by turn increased passives if I'm not wrong most of their passives are fixed applied applied once they enter the field which is also another good thing for offensive teams you see that Dylan actually is able to you know double up as a DPS when he transforms and also you know slices enemies with his effect attack hitting three targets I think that's one of his biggest assets in the team and with lifesteal you know he is basically potentially immortal as well but he is pretty frail uh, which is another issue we did manage to overcome this magic team because I think the magic team uh, didn't hit us too much and I think the anti didn't really reduce my Dylan's counter rate to a very bad amount so still okay and of course with red grid here to give isolation that also further boosts the bulk of the offensive team because technically isolation is like having many many skill nullifications <laughs> right so it's a good thing yeah. So just to go through the equipment, my fight is actually on crit and lethal. You can go with double crit, you can go with double lethal. It's fine if you're using Fenrir, better to go with double crit. Um, but she does gain 50% more crit rate if she enters immortal form, okay? I have double HP on her. Some people also use double speed and double counter on her. That's also fine. It really depends on who is your counter hero in the team. Double speed for her is probably so that she is the attack leader and Dylan can go heavy with the crit and lethal. Okay, for her jewels, physical attack increase because you want the Agnes Flame to pop. Also, uh, skill use chance to increase awakening gauge so that she can land Agnes Flame even more efficiently. For the accessories, I have reset awaken skill and guardian ring and hide. Guardian ring is more important for her if you don't have the reset awaken skill. You can also give her the initiate stem set okay, so that she is able to reset with that stem effect. For her traits, I have given her skill use chance as well, sleep resist and silence resist because I think those two are pretty important. She's most likely to get slapped by Yonhi and put to sleep with Yonhi's skills and you don't want her to be silenced as well. Okay. For Dylan, I've given him double speed because he's my attack leader. Counter, double counter, increase effect attack rate with a myth substat of counter rate so that's the most optimal. If you don't have this counter rate, then I suggest you pump his counter rate higher without the effect attack. Uh, 5%. Lifesteal and survive on 1 HP, 7 out of old jewel. If not, you can give him survive on 1 HP with lifesteal as a separate jewel, which means you'll miss out on the increase awakening gauge or speed attack. I mean, you have to give him speed attack if you use him as the attack leader. So these are things you need to consider. There are few ways you can play around with his jewels. And uh, Guardian Ring, du hit, double hit, and also purification for his accessory. Now for his traits, I give him poison and blind resist and reflect nullification resist because these are things that you don't really want him to take okay as a counter unit for cult i've given her lethal and crit as well um double block more block for my cult because i just ran out of hp armor so if you really want to give her hp it's also fine more important is the accessory the guardian ring and evasion guardian ring is so that she can live a little longer because she can be pretty frail and for the jewels, crit and lethal rate increase, survive from 1 HP and I give her skill use chance here so that she can cleanse earlier for me. For traits wise, up to you, you can give her 3 resistances as well. For red grit, okay, um, double crit for increased debuff cast rate so that she isolates better and more block from myself. 
I can actually go HP on her because I do have the full block accessory. Now if you have the full block accessory, then use more HP for her. Okay, and of course give her damage reduction, survive more HP, and maybe, you know, block rate or something else. Uh, if you don't have the 7 of old jewel for defense. I gave her taunt, okay, that is usually a go-to accessory for red grid. If you don't have the taunt, then purification would be good as well. For her traits, I give her bleed and poison resist because these two are the statuses that will cripple red grid very very quickly and you do not want her to be crippled too fast because she is kind of like your buffer and your wall, okay? So uh, those two are good. You don't really have to give her resistances against immobility like paralysis, electrify because you don't really need her skills. She just needs to survive on the field. And finally for Fenrir, we have double crit because he has more lethal on his side. Double HP, physical attack increase is important because you want him to be able to heal more because his healing is based on his physical attack. You also want recovery skill on him and also crit and lethal rate. If you don't have crit and lethal rate, you can give him increased awakening gauge charge speed as well. Now for his accessory, you can opt for guardian ring now as I said because he's pretty frail but I give him willful ring and hide and purification. Moving on, we do have the jack team. For the jack team, I give him double lethal so that he is able to cool down his skills faster and be able to heal more frequently. Double HP, willful ring because he has a very very high amount shield. So willful ring hide height so that he won't make countered and then you also have crit and lethal rate increase, physical attack increase and survive on 1 HP that's very important. Skill use chance is good on him because he is able to do 2 turn buff duration reduction and that's something that you want to set off from the start so that he's able to remove all the guardian rings on your enemies and of course I gave him other resistances such as stun and blind as well to counter the more common statuses that he may face in arena. So we're gonna head in with this team. So here we are facing a magic team with Judas and um, Rudy. So thankfully the Jack actually you know used his top skill first which removes the guardian rings of all the enemies so I can definitely proceed in with the attack next turn. If I manage to land the Agnes Flame which is great I did yeah. In this case, this is the very ideal start for me. Well, maybe not the most ideal because she decided to cleanse. That's the worst kind of uh, response that I can have. But yeah, I did get feared on most of my units. So um, my, you know, my fight is actually pretty active. Take note that the formation I'm using now is the more standard, you know, formation for offensive teams whereby red grid is in front to take all the damage and also to take all the basic attacks that she can receive so that she can land the isolation on the enemies. I realized that Dylan's transformation skill is actually really good after Anti uses her skill nullification because he does a decrease buff duration reduction by one turn and that will actually remove one time skill nullification so that's actually pretty beneficial but of course it has to be used at that right time otherwise you know Sometimes I feel that his transformation skill is a little like dead weight because it doesn't add much to your to your uh, outcome. So uh, Jack is actually a very strong damage dealer, especially if he uses his bottom skill against you know magic teams, magic units, um, against offensive units. So that's something that you can look forward to. Of course, uh, that is. Provided you do have red grid and currently most offensive teams are running this team. I think they are also making use of the very high damage potential of Shaq. Especially if you do build Jack up to level 50 and you have fighters still on him, that will, be a, that will really make a huge difference to your entire battle outcome. <laughs> Jack himself does survive pretty long as well. Unfortunately, he does <laughs> die to death here. Yeah, so this team is actually really good. I would say the win rate for this team that I experienced was better than with Fenrir. I think one potential reason was that 
Jack did help to reduce physical attack of the enemies when I face certain uh, physical attack enemies like Rui. <laughs> Not that it really matters, but you know. Jack definitely has more bulk than Fenrir, especially his shield being able to absorb so much damage if it doesn't get removed. So he can really take all the counters from Abel without a problem, unlike Fenrir who will die, you know, to maybe two counters from Abel. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, unfortunately he uses his bottom skill first and this is a universal team so he's not supposed to do that much damage but he still did decent damage against them so that's a good thing and Rudy does die here so my enemy loses all the defense and block increases which will make him even more frail now uh, unfortunately though the fear comes through Actually, Dillon does hit really hard as well. Yeah. Pretty good. So if you do want to use an offensive team, I would strongly suggest you can start off with the Fenrir team and then focus on your units, especially your Dillon's, your Mad Grid, your Hawk, your Fi, and then add in Jack here at this point. Okay, Jack is a very strong addition to the offensive team without a doubt. Especially, you know, if you check my recent review of him, even at level 44, he has the potential to do huge amounts of damage. Of course, if you do face, you know, a team, a tank team, or rather a team that uses Rudy or Ru, well, that can potentially reduce his damage quite a bit as well, but still good damage. It really depends on how you gear him. Like if you make his crit and lethal rate pretty decent, he is still able to you know, do some amazing amounts of uh, damage to the enemy. So every time he uses a skill, your team can heal pretty well, I would say, but because this team, this enemy team does have a Judas, which I did mention is pretty common. So all the healing gets, you know, kind of nerfed quite a bit, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, so unfortunately I was destroyed by this team. So I hope this video was helpful and if it did do give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Big shout out to my channel members ZMD Phoenix and Yamaki for the support. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you.